are logged on and listening to the Computer Corner Show, brought to you by Computer Corner, your local resource for computer hardware, software, services, and training since 1983. Computer Corner is high-tech with a human touch. This is Phil Shortell, your host and lead instructor at Computer Corner, and with me here today are both the owners of Computer Corner, Carol and Joe Petronovich, and good morning to you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Hey, if your grammar's not groovy, your GUI's gone goofy, or your gamma is grainy, you <laughs> should think of coming into Computer Corner to get it fixed, or just to find out what I'm talking about here in the event that you do not already know these terms. Now, that's pretty clever there, Phil. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you for listening to the Computer Corner Show today. We're very happy to be offering you computer tips, tricks, trivia, and more. And, of course, if you're a client of ours, we thank you most of all. Now that we are posting our podcasts on our website and YouTube, there may be people listening who don't know who we are. So we'll do just a bit of housekeeping before we bring you to our topics of the day. As Phil said, he's the lead instructor at Computer Corner here in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And we offer classroom computer instruction and one-on-one -on -one tutoring, as well as computer hardware, software, and technical service, both in our shop and at your home or business. Phil has been a professional Microsoft certified instructor for over 30 years, so he really knows his stuff, especially as it relates to software. And Joe is the co-owner of Computer Corner with Carol. Joe is an MCSE, which means Microsoft Certified Systems Engineer, with technical ex expertise and experience going back to before DOS or Windows. Right. Carol and Joe founded Computer Corner in 1983, 36 years ago. Wow. Yeah. Carol is the lead salesperson for the state of New Mexico agencies and has a tremendous amount of product knowledge to share with you all. We hope you'll visit us at Computer Corner at our somewhat new location. We've been there about two years. Now. Yeah, it's going, it's getting uh, there, isn't been it? Here. And that is 3101 Manal Northeast, about two blocks west of Carlisle on the north side of the street. We have a beautiful showroom and lots of knowledgeable sales and technical staff to, to assist anybody. You can also contact us via email with questions or ideas for podcast topics. And to do that, you send something to corner, C-O-R-N-E-R, -E at C-O-M-P-C-O-R-N-E-R dot com. That's corner at compcorner dot com. All righty. So with that out of the way, we can jump right to our topics for the day. Yeah, on May 6th of this year, Microsoft announced that Windows 10 is getting a built-in Linux kernel. We found this interesting because Linux has long been in competition with Microsoft as an alternative operating system to Windows. Microsoft isn't exactly making Windows 10 into a Linux-based product, it will still be based on the Windows kernel, but it's interesting that they are saying that this will have a drastic impact on the system's performance. I think yeah, when it's opening great. and closing files. And I think we really need to explain to people, uh, most people don't seem to know this or actually have no reason to know it, but when you open up a file in one of your applications, the application is not what's actually opening the file, is it, Joe? No, and in fact, most of them have like a auto save feature but that's like things in word and everything else where you can back up what you've done mm -hmm. not the program to start and stop but when you open a file in microsoft word microsoft word doesn't actually open the file windows opens the Correct. file and when you save a file from microsoft word or excel or pretty much anything even including the adobe products uh, you know just about anything that follows the rules at least yeah. uh, it is actually windows who stores the file not the application that, program that is and this is where the Linux kernel is optimized for small-sized improved launch times and low memory usage, especially in file operations. But speed improvements will still depend upon which app you're running and how it's interacting with the file system. So all this is scheduled for a few weeks from now, sometime around the end of June. Mm -hmm. But since we're on the topic of Windows 10, let's talk about that a little bit more. Microsoft will stop supporting Windows 7 on January 24th, 2020, which is less than eight months from now. And what that means is that they won't be sending out any new updates or patches. You know, on the surface, that might delight some of us who hate the crash Wednesday. <laughs> In fact, that happened just a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And that always follows Patch Tuesday. That's sort of one of those things that we talk about in the industry. Patch Tuesday and Crash Wednesday. Mm -hmm. And what that means, in case you don't know that, Microsoft typically sends out patches for the operating system on Tuesday. And sometimes those patches, although they've been tested by Microsoft in their own machines, they <laughs> certainly haven't been tested on yours, and that leads to what we now call 
crash Wednesday. But all of these updates, you know, are, are there to fixing for fixing things like potential security vulnerabilities. So those updates are vitally important. And we say again, beginning in January of next year, they will not be coming anymore for Windows 7 users. So when Windows 7 came out, they pushed out the date for supporting XP. They did. They did, but that's probably not going to happen for Windows 7 unless you pay Microsoft a hefty fee to keep sending you those updates. And when we say hefty, hefty, excuse me, I believe they said $100 per PC for the first year. We're not sure about that. We're going to be researching that, and you'll hear more about that as time goes on. And if you have Windows 7 on a network, you have to pay the support fee on every PC on the network even if the other systems are running Windows 10. So that would be pretty costly. You know, this is going to affect a lot of small businesses. Oh, yeah. That even to this day are running Windows 7 32-bit, mostly because of their uh, point-of-sale sa- software packages, accounting packages. And I, I guess the only advice we can give those folks is to get those off the network or the Internet. Just use them for what you're using them for as a standalone POS or something like that and have a newer machine in your operation somewhere to do updates Mm -hmm. with Windows 10. Yes. So the push is on, really, for everyone to move to Windows 10. And frankly, if you need a new computer, of course, you don't have a choice anyway. No, you don't. For now, Intel has advertised two more bugs in their processors, which they say is hardware-based and not fixable. And their advice was to buy a new computer. Mm Mm-hmm. With a the whole same, new computer. A whole new computer. A computer with the same Intel problem. processor. With, in with the same Intel processor. <laughs> uh, uh. Uh, their, their reasoning was some of the hardware manufacturers, the motherboard manufacturers, are helping to compensate the problems that would possibly exist in the CPU. But with what you've got now, you do have a problem. Yeah. They wouldn't say what that would be. Well, I, I, I did a little quick research yeah. just before we started recording here, and I found a little description of, of what's going on. And it turns out that the modern processors, in, in fact, all of them since 2011, have a feature built into them that is predicting what an application is going to be asking for next. Look-ahead technology. Look-ahead technology. Mm-hmm. And with that look-ahead technology, when they bring it into the processor itself, there's a flaw which conceivably could allow it to leak from one application to another. Mm -hmm. And with this particular flaw, somebody who who takes uh, advantage of it doesn't even have to load malicious software on the machine to get to it. So it's it's really an interesting thing. Artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence. You know, they're going to come and get us sooner or later. Mm -hmm. Okay, but uh, anyway, Windows 10 has nine separate editions. Amazing. Uh, we're talking to you about, you know, you really do need to get yourself to Windows 10 here, but there are nine separate editions of Windows 10, ranging from home to enterprise to server. At Computer Corner, we offer Windows 10 Professional 64-bit as our standard because it gives you the most flexibility for memory usage and future updates and features that do not exist in lower-priced versions. Yeah, we've talked about that many times. Mm-hmm. Um, in fact, the limitations of Windows 10 Home are immense. The biggest one being that you can't set it up on a network and you can't work remotely to your office with Windows 10 no. Home. There's one Windows 10 edition that I bet most people don't know about. It's Windows 10 IoT or Internet of Things. And there are actually two versions of this as well, Enterprise and Core. Windows 10 IoT, uh, we've mentioned that before when we were doing the radio show. The Internet of Things, more and more every day, more of your appliances Mm -hmm. are becoming self-aware let's say and they are communicating and you know even your refrigerator even your refrigerator and certainly your television set we talked about the fact that potentially people could be listening to your conversations through your refrigerator yeah (laughs) well that's cool no pun intended but it really was intended absolutely okay so microsoft's also been busy making updates to edge with better privacy controls, which is great news, and Internet Explorer mode, which, you know, I kind of like that, too, because I always liked Internet Explorer, but they're not really supporting it anymore. They're not supporting it. And from my standpoint, there are two features in Microsoft Edge that I use all the time now, and they are the ability to go into reading mode, which automatically strips away all the advertisements that you see on the site. I'm not talking about pop-ups. Right. I'm talking about anytime you go to a web page, there's always a thing. Why don't you go here to Facebook? Why don't you go look at this other article? Yeah. And I want to read the article, and I just want to read the article and nothing else. 
So the reading view, which is very easy to access, and we could show you if you came in and took a, one of our Windows 10 classes here, <laughs> uh, it's really a nice thing. And there's also a web markup view, which allows you to make notes on a web page and save them for later use or actually share them with your notes with friends. Really nice stuff that's in in um, Microsoft Edge. So Edge, they're also implementing a new feature called Collections, which is sort of like OneNote. And Phil, please explain what OneNote does. I don't think many people know. I don't think they do either, and I don't think they use it. And I think that it is actually a pretty neat little product. OneNote was once part of the Microsoft Office collection, sold with a suite of products like Word, Excel, and Outlook. But beginning with Windows 7, Microsoft untethered OneNote from Office, and you could download OneNote and use it without paying for one of the available Office suites. And if you're running Windows 10, well, it, it's now included, built in, even there, even without a need for a download. OneNote is just that, just what it says. It's, it's a notebook. You can create notebooks for all different kinds of things, a notebook for recipes, a notebook for each of your topics in college or in high school or in or in grade school for that matter, and then just file all kinds of different things in there. It's like the ability to put pictures in with sounds, in with documents, and have them all related. They actually don't get put in, they're actually linked in, uh, which, it, which is a, a pretty good thing. Huh. I've had a couple of physicians uh, who came in here for training who use OneNote when they make rounds for their patients. Hmm. And they've got in there the notes that they speak in or type in after the, the visit with the patient along with x-rays and prescription statuses and all kinds of other things. Think about it for stuff you used to do in high school when you had a notebook for biology, a notebook for chemistry, a notebook for uh, whatever other subjects you were, you were talking about, and you could put everything in it. It's really a neat little product, and that's another thing you could probably come in and get a little education on and be able to make significant use of that in your own personal life. So that's going to be part of Edge. It's not called OneNote. It's, right. It's, as I mentioned, it's called Collections. Right. But it's going to be really helpful if you're doing research and collecting yeah, and it's, data. It's really an expansion of what I was talking about, about the file markup, the web page markup thing right. that is in Edge right now, where you can save things in, like in favorites and stuff like that. But this will enable you to have, in effect, a OneNote for Edge. Very cool. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, since we're on the topic of Microsoft products, right, we're on to that one, I think, I'd like to talk to you about some features in Word that most people don't know about, in part because they aren't automatically configured when you put them on your or your favorite geek installs office on your right. system. One of these is an advanced grammar checker in Microsoft Word. It's similar to a product out there called Grammarly that you actually can buy, but the advanced grammar checker, this one, it's built, right, built into right into Word. The Advanced Grammar Check has been part of Word since actually the 2016 version. So it's part of 2016, 2019, and of course then Office 365. If you want to enable it, you go to File, Options, Proofing, where you will find Grammar and Refinements, and just to the right of that, Settings. When you click on that Settings button, you'll actually find lots of checkboxes that you can implement to warn you when your document contains things such as overuse of conjunctions or even age, gender, and racial bias really? or vague and unnecessary adverbs. I'm, I'm not so sure I want to put yeah. this in there because sure. I can't write jokes in there. They'll probably flag yeah. them all. <laughs> uh, there, there's much more to it than I just said, but we don't have a two-hour podcast. So check it out for yourself or uh, send us a message to uh, corner at compcorner.com and we'll give you detailed instructions how to get in there. So we're coming closer to the end of the show, but I want to talk for a little bit about what you can do when you buy a new computer. What are some of the, th the things that you should do when you buy a new computer? Number one, run those Windows updates because no matter when that computer was manufactured, it, it's going to be behind on updates because they're coming out so frequently now. Unless you got it here. Well, that's true. Good point. <laughs> if you got your computer at Computer Corner, you're going to have all your updates current. Yes. But... Joe, you've seen some that are, what, a year old in the updates or a year past year? If you buy the name brands, HP, Dell, Toshiba, Sony, they're going to be over a year old, minimum, mm -hmm. if not two. They just do not keep the updates current on the production line that I would think would be very simple to do when they're 
duping these drives as quickly as they're selling product, but they just don't. Mm-hmm. Right. And that's one of the things, as I mentioned, we do here at Computer Corner. When you buy a computer from us, we're going to yeah. make sure all the updates up to that moment in time, at least, are on there so you won't have to spend hours, and it would literally be, could literally be hours, yeah, sure. getting the system up to its current level. So something else that you want to do right after you buy your new computer is clean up that bloatware. Mm. So if you buy one of the Equus trademarked, com- trademarked Equus computers at Computer Corner, you're not going to get that bloatware, all that, you know, some people call it other stuff. They do. But anyway, advertisements, you know, 30-day f- free trials of software, all kinds of stuff like that. And mostly 30-day trials of software that you really don't want a 30-day free trial of. Right. So you want to clean all that stuff up. You know, one of the main ones that is just a mean one to get a, get rid of, if you buy a new computer, not ours, of course, that has the trial version of Office on it, and you're using it a couple of times, and the 30-day or whatever day notice comes up, and you decide, well, I'm just going to go buy it now instead of going through Microsoft Online to buy it. You can download it, and it puts it on there, but the old one never then comes off. Mm-hmm. You have and to it do just it takes up space. You have to go out and get some special tools to get it off of there. Amazing. One of the advantages, again, of getting something from Computer Corner, because we think about this stuff, and we don't want you to have to think about it. More right. stuff about new computers you wanted to get into? You know, we do sell the name brands also. Yes, we do. So they do have bloatware installed. So we offer a service at Computer Corner to remove that. It's called the gold level service mm-hmm. so that we can remove the bloatware before. So you don't have to it do it there. yourself. Yep. And you the, time, the time to do it is when you unpackage the computer. Right, before you've installed a bunch of other things and really gotten going with it. Uh, it's easy to find those programs and get rid of them at that yeah. point. Now, mm-hmm. it, it's tempting. You're going to look at some of this stuff, and you think, well, maybe I'll look at that a little later. That looks interesting. That'd be cool. But it's not. Not not mm-hmm. usually. So another thing you want to do when you get your, your new computer, of course, is you want to install your favorite web browser. You know, we were talking a little bit earlier about how IE Internet Explorer isn't supported by Microsoft anymore. So you're going to be opting for probably Chrome, Firefox, or even Opera, which surprisingly is gaining in momentum. But I don't use that one. Nope. And, of course, if you've got a Windows 10 computer. You've got Edge. Absolutely, which we talked about, too. Yeah, and here's one of the things that a lot of people, I think, don't really know. I have four different browsers on my computer. I only have three. Well, yeah, I'm okay. Envious. Well, you know, I have one I don't ever use. That's, I guess it's just there in case. But w- why do we have more than one browser on the computer? Well, one of the reasons is some things just don't work. Yeah. For example, I'm sort of involved with cryptocurrency, and every now and then I have to buy and sell through the exchanges. A couple of the web browsers don't work. Mm-hmm. And it and doesn't mean it's going to be like that all the time. It means one day... Edge might not do the give you the results you're looking for, and then the next day Edge is working fine and Chrome is not doing what you yep, want it to do. I've noticed that. So that's why most people who who work in computers have multiple browsers just in case they need to get to a particular website and it doesn't work in one of them. You can easily switch to one of the others. In fact, that's probably one of the main uh, questions to call centers is this doesn't work. And the first question is, what browser are you using? Right. Exactly. And they'll and say this, I, and they'll say, oh, try another one. Or they'll Thanks say, is calling. it up to date? Right. Yeah. Is yeah. your browser up to date? Is that's your browser the other up thing. To yeah, that's one of the things we're going to talk about in our next podcast, too, when you're, when you're getting a problem and you're trying to look for help, how you can do that. And people really can learn to be much more self-sufficient than they are in most cases, including yep. us sometimes. Sometimes <laughs> we get lazy, too. But other things that you need to do, when you're uh, getting out a new computer. I You've got to, to establish a backup plan. You have got to establish a backup plan. And we're going to talk about that a little bit more in the next podcast, too. But In the meantime, though, I have written a blog about that that is mm. on Computer Corner's website at www.compcorner.com. So if you want, you can read about it, too. It's just okay. a one-page blog, but... It'll get you started on backup. Don't even think about starting and using the computer for a couple of days before you establish your backup plan. Establish your backup plan before you start using your computer. And the next thing you've got to do before you start using your computer is decide what security software you want. Mm -hmm. So, of course, at Computer Corner, we recommend Kaspersky, and I still like Kaspersky a lot. There was some bad PR. Bad PR, but I think that's what it was, just bad public uh, relations it was not bad performance true. in any nope. that, that died with a Mueller report oh yeah okay <laughs> oh. 
We won't go there. No, we no politics won't. on our show. But in addition to making sure that you have antivirus software on your computer, you might want to also consider a couple of other programs. We recommend them. We don't sell them, but we recommend them, and everyone who works here uses them. They are Hitman Pro and Malware Bytes, and there are other ones that you can use too. Actually, I wrote a blog about those three products working together too. Mm -hmm. That's Kaspersky, Hitman Pro, and Malware Bytes. So that, you know, if you want to spend a little bit of time, you can go to my blogs and get all kinds of good information. Yeah, there's all kinds of stuff. One other thing you want to do as soon as you get a new computer, I would like to mention, and that is perhaps you might want to enroll in a Windows 10 class at Computer Corner. And, of course, if you're a veteran, our, our computer diagnostics are always free. You just need to let us know that you're a veteran. Mm -hmm. And uh, we thank you for your service, if you are. We definitely do. And today, uh, as we're recording this today, it happens to be uh, we're in the month for uh, recognition of police officers. Oh. And I think that's a good thing for everybody to remember, too, that they're out there putting their lives on the line for us. Very yep. nice. We should appreciate them. In our next show, we're going to talk about the top 10 things you want to always do with your computer. Mm -hmm. The 10 things that you always want to perform, the, the tasks you want to do all the time. And you don't want to let them go. So in two weeks, we'll be talking about that. But in the meantime, I believe we've come to the end of our show, Phil. We are. We have indeed come to the end of our show. You can listen to us again in two weeks. And if you sign up for our newsletter, which I mentioned just a moment ago, and you can do that by going to www.compcorner.com, C-O-M-P-C-O-R-N-E-R.com. Carol will send you a reminder to listen to us every other Saturday. And you can listen to past shows by either going to our website or searching for us on YouTube. And I'll send out that YouTube channel link, too, okay. so it makes it real easy. We hope that you think of Computer Corner for all your hardware, software, service, and training needs. And until we meet again, mind your bits and bytes. This is Phil. And Carol. And Joe. Wishing you carefree computing. The Computer Corner Show is logging off. Mm -hmm.